pentatonic scale is an essential part of the guitar player's toolkit. It's like a hammer and screwdriver. If you play country, if you play rock, if you play blues, if you play jazz, you're gonna lean heavily on this scale. It's usually one of the first things that we learn when we start to get some vocabulary under our fingers. A lot of times when we start to solo, we're doing it over a one, four, five blues progression, and it's easy to get stuck using minor pentatonic, and that's okay. There've been lots of great records through history, a lot of wonderful classic blues artists relied very heavily on that scale. They used it almost entirely. Even more modern players like Stevie Ray Vaughan played minor pentatonics almost exclusively. But you might find yourself getting a little tired of that sound and wondering what else can I do to break out of these patterns? A great way to expand what you're playing is to take the pentatonic scale and just start mixing major and minor. That way you can take patterns and licks that you already know, move them up and down a few frets, and you get so much more mileage out of it. You can be so much more creative. You can really expand your sound. I'm Charlie Long. Thanks for coming to my channel, checking out this video. Please like, please subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be lots more great information coming. We're gonna get into a couple of ways today to take your pentatonic patterns and start mixing major and minor. We're gonna take it one step further. We're gonna start playing through the chord changes with our major and minor pentatonic scales. And believe me, you will really hear yourself start to sound different. Let's get into it. So just what will mixing major and minor pentatonics do for our playing? The first thing that you're gonna notice is a completely different sound between the two scales due to a different set of intervals being played. Now, in the intro to this video, I was playing over one, four, five blues in A. So we'll use the one chord, A7, as a reference. If we play A minor pentatonic over the A7, the notes and the intervals are as follows. We get the one or A, we get minor third, which is C, we get the fourth, which is D, we get the fifth, which is E, and we get the flat seven, which is G. So over A7, the minor third gives us that classic bluesy sound, and of course the flat seven or the G note really fits the chord. So scale sounds like this. Now compare that to a major pentatonic. The intervals there are A, which is our one. We've got B, which is the two. C sharp, which is our major third. We've got E, which is the fifth. We've got F sharp, which is the sixth. This scale to my ears, instead of sounding bluesy, it sounds sort of country-ish or it has a Southern rock flavor. And I guess that's because of a couple of what I consider to be happy intervals, the major third and the sixth. Check out the difference in the sound uh, when you hear this scale over the A7. <laughs> Also, check out the sound when you hear these scales played back to back. Very different sounds, and I bet you can already start to imagine the possibilities of what using these two scales could do for your creativity. Hey, here's a little tip. Anything you play in minor pentatonic, whether it's a lick, a pattern, a phrase, if you drop it down three frets, it becomes major. So here's a little blues lick in A minor. If I drop that down three frets, it now becomes major. Some ways to practice this stuff. Start off playing, say, on two strings and move back and forth between the two patterns. Now you're starting to familiarize your ear with the sounds of these two scales as you play them back to back. You can practice the entire scale 
ascending through one and descending through another. Or, as we've mentioned, you might take a blues lick and just move it up and down three frets. Once you start to get fluid with these things, you're ready to move on to our first soloing strategy. Our first soloing strategy is to play the major and minor pentatonic of the same key and to apply it over the entire blues progression. Now, we've been talking about playing a blues in A. Three chords would be A7, D7, and E7. For the sake of having some structure to your practice, you could limit yourself to, say, playing the major pentatonic over the one chord, or A7, and then you would play A minor pentatonic over the four and five chords, or D7 and E7. So, for instance, let's say we start off with our A7 chord. We can play something major. When it goes to the four chord, we can play minor, it goes to A7 or the one chord, major again. and so on through the progression. This is a strategy that's very reminiscent of something you might have heard Eric Clapton play back in the Cream days. Take a listen to Crossroads. You might hear this type of soloing strategy. Now, when you're starting out, don't get frustrated if you don't know a bunch of great blues licks. As a matter of fact, I'd recommend just running through the respective scales to get used to the different sounds and to get comfortable moving between the different positions. Check this out. A7. D7, familiarize yourself with the fretboard. As with any skill, you have to crawl before you walk, you have to walk before you run. Start slow. Take the time to get really familiar and fluent and comfortable with how everything fits and how it's laid out on the fretboard. Before long, you'll be ripping through this stuff. Let's go on to the next level, which is playing the respective major and minor pentatonic scales of each of the three chords in the progression. This is fun stuff. Soloing strategy number two involves looking at each chord in the progression and choosing to play either the major or minor pentatonic of each chord. Our three chords in a blues and A are A7, D7, and E7. So we'd have A major and A minor pentatonic, D major, D minor pentatonic, E major, and E minor pentatonic to choose from. Now that sounds like a huge amount of information to process. So again, limit yourself when you practice. For instance, I found that I really like the sound of playing A minor pentatonic over the A7 or the one chord and then the major pentatonics of the four and the five chords is just my preference. But to me, it sounds really bluesy and down home over the one. And then I can be a little more melodic and lyrical over the four and the five. You'll develop your own preferences as you practice and as you hear other guitar players use this stuff. Let me play through some examples. <laughs> You can use a looper if you have one to lay down a chord progression and practice this stuff. There are loads of great backing tracks on YouTube. As I mentioned earlier, you can start off just playing through the scales themselves to get familiar with how everything lays out on the neck. You can take, say, one lick 
and learn to transpose it from major to minor and from key to key. Check this out. So over an A, here's a standard blues lick in minor. Over a D7, here's the same lick in major. Over E7, here's the same lick in minor. D7 in minor. Now over A7 in major. The freedom that this kind of practice will bring to your playing and your creativity will bring you so much more fun, joy, and excitement on your instrument, I promise you. Thanks again for checking out the video. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope this helped you make sense out of soloing. Happy guitar playing.